Mr. President, uh, last year, the ICC declared that President Vladimir Putin of Russia was in violation of international law and that he was a war criminal. The ICC issued arrest warrants for Putin and one of his senior officials saying there are reasonable grounds to believe that they had committed the war crime of unlawful deportation and transfer of population for their systematic kidnapping of thousands and thousands of Ukrainian children. I supported the ICC decision. And in fact, that is the tip of the iceberg of what Putin has done in Ukraine. Putin started the most destructive war in Europe since World War II. He has bombed civilians and devastated civilian infrastructure, killing at least 30,000 civilians and displacing millions more. Hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian and Russian soldiers have been killed or wounded as a result of Putin's horrific invasion of Ukraine. On that occasion, when the ICC declared Putin a war criminal, the United States government welcomed the ICC decision. A White House spokesperson said, and I quote, there is no doubt that Russia is committing war crimes and atrocities in Ukraine, and we have been clear that those responsible must be held accountable. The ICC prosecutor is an independent actor and makes his own prosecutorial decisions based on the evidence before him. We support accountability for perpetrators of war crimes, end of quote. That is what a U.S. government spokesman said in March 2023, and I agree. In my view, Mr. Putin is, in fact, a war criminal. Mr. President, we live in a world of increasing division, tension, and hostility. Around the globe, countries are dramatically increasing their military budgets. More countries are attempting to gain nuclear weapons and other dangerous weapon systems. It is in times like these that we most need international law. Without it, we will have an even more violent world where might makes right and war criminals can act with impunity. In recent years, the ICC has attempted to hold governments and political leaders accountable for crimes against humanity. That is what they do, and that is what they are supposed to do. All wars are terrible, and very often civilian casualties are unavoidable. But after the horrors of the Second World War, countries throughout the world came together to try to establish rules to govern the conduct of war and to limit civilian casualties. The ICC's role is to enforce these limits. Mr. President, yesterday the ICC prosecutor announced that he was requesting arrest warrants for three top Hamas leaders, including Yahya Sinwa, the group's leader in Gaza. To my mind, Sinwa and his Hamas accomplices are clearly war criminals. The horrific October 7th terrorist attack on Israel began this war and included the mass murder of 1,200 innocent men, women, and children, the taking of hundreds of hostages, and sexual violence against captives. These war crimes are well documented, and very few people would dispute the merits of those charges. Mr. President, the ICC prosecutor also asked for arrest warrants for Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu and Defense Minister Gallant. The ICC charges focus on the use of starvation of civilians as a method of war 
as well as international attacks against the civilian population. Those are the charges. The use of starvation of civilians as a method of war, clearly a war crime, as well as intentional attacks against the civilian population. Specifically, the prosecutor says that Netanyahu is responsible for, quote, depriving civilians of objects indispensable to their survival, including willfully impeding relief supplies as provided for under the Geneva Conventions, end quote. Now, many people here in the Beltway in Washington have responded negatively to this decision from the ICC prosecutor. It seems that some folks here were comfortable what the, with what the ICC did in terms of Putin and in terms of Sinwa, but not with Netanyahu. Some have argued that it is unfair to compare the democratically elected head of the Israeli government to Putin, who runs an authoritarian system, or Sinwa, the head of a terrorist organization. But that is not what the ICC has done. In fact, the ICC prosecutor has looked at what each of these leaders has done, looked at their actions, and then compared those actions to established standards of international law. In other words, the ICC is not making some claim of equivalence, as some have charged, but is in fact holding both sides in this current war to the same standard. Yes, democratically elected officials can commit war crimes. Let me repeat, democratically elected officials can commit war crimes. The ICC is doing its job. It's doing what it is supposed to do. We cannot only apply international law when it is convenient. And the independent panel of international legal experts, the ICC appointed to help with this case, unanimously, unanimously agreed with the charges. Mr. President, people may be uncomfortable to see the Prime Minister of Israel charged with war crimes. But let us take a hard look at what he has actually done. And we must determine whether his actions meet the standards of being a war crime. In seven and a half months, more than 35,000 Palestinians have been killed and almost 80,000 injured. Thousands more are still under the rubble, but their bodies have not been fully identified. Some 60% of the victims are women, children, or the elderly. More than 250 aid workers have been killed, including 193 UN staff, more than in any previous conflict. 